Yikes, good morning. Um, <clears throat> I had something I was thinking about today. Actually, I've been thinking about it for a while. It's been bothering me for a while. And I thought it'd be nice to make a video about it. Because I'm sure there are some of you who need to hear it, I guess. Um, and I always hope that the things that I share with you about myself that I don't care for about myself um, are helpful to other people. By the way, I feel like, do you feel like this is the only shirt I ever wear? Oh my gosh. But I always fail to set clothes out of the room when I put Vera down for her morning nap um, because her crib is still in her, our bedroom. Um, and so I just grab what's clean in a laundry basket usually or out of the dryer. And I feel like this has been, this shirt has just been every day, man, every day. I don't dislike it, but anyway. So, <sighs> let's talk about some things. So I recently told you guys in my last Keto Bites video, um, sorry, this is rude, excuse me a moment. Uh, I really, <laughs> I really need to drink that, but I know I'm not going to. And I really need to do my makeup, but I know I'm not going to, I'm just gonna talk. I talked in my last Keto Bites video about how I need to make some changes and be stronger um, if I want to see results on keto, I've let some things become lax. And one of the things that's hardest for me, I don't know much about personality types. I don't know much about psychology or any of that. But I do know about me. And I know that I'm a people pleaser. And I will avoid hurt feelings and conflict at any cost. Um, and that cost is usually my own hurt feelings and my own inner conflict. And I spent way too many years being friends with people who were bad for me um, and allowing people to walk all over me, and I still do to an extent. Um, one of the nicest parts about my marriage is that I married one of the world's strongest advocates for me. So he and I... I will tell you honestly, we get into arguments, probably a regular amount that couples argue, um, a couple times a week maybe at the most. And they're never real blowouts, but even the real blowouts, at the core of what our fights are always about is that I'm trying to make a decision that pleases him and he's trying to fight for the decision that would please me. Because a lot of the time it's not even necessarily that we want different things, it's that we're afraid the other person wants something different. And that's what the, like the core, like the actual part of the argument, if it's about dinner or if it's about uh, buying a piece of furniture or any decision that we're, we need to make, um, that's what ends up being, and then sometimes we have to stop ourselves and be like, wait a minute, we're just fighting over wanting to make the other person happy. So, that's really hard because for me, one of the things, I, and trust me, I take full responsibility for my weight and for you know, what happened to me and why I allowed myself to be blissfully unaware of what my size was. But one of the things that was the hardest, and I've talked about it before, is when we were really struggling with fertility problems and it was stuff that we could no longer really be super secretive about, like miscarriages, you know, like if I was at a family event and people, everybody knew but didn't want to say. The one way that people would show me affection is with food. Because I think it's an easy and a, a wordless way, you know, it's one of the most comforting ways to comfort someone I guess it's something you can partake in um, it feels like a nice distraction I think people always have good intentions when they do it but by the way I'm really scraping the bottom I got one of these I think this is called spatty these little spatulas cosmetic spatulas so that you can get like the last drop of what I have a new a full new foundation in the cupboard but I just really like to try and Get every last drop out of here. It's kind of nice. Good morning, America Deals and Steals, man. Okay, so, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know. I think I might have to, I might have to give up on this one. Even that's not getting anything out of it anymore. But 
um, you know, so people would want to take me out to dinner or they would want to invite me over and and order food in and I think the hardest thing was there were times when I really just didn't want it. Genuinely didn't want it, um, even if it was one of my favorite things because I was trying to make better choices and do better for me and people couldn't handle it. They still can't to this day. It's still hard for them. And I think because they have this connotation, this like, oh, when I was with Carissa, when I would hang out with, with Carissa, we would go out to dinner and we would eat whatever we wanted and then we'd go out for dessert afterwards. And then, you know, we'd hang out and watch TV after that and sometimes we would eat some more. So they have this like warm, fuzzy, food filled, association with me part of that's my fault part of it's just I think friendship I think there are a lot of people who just do do that kind of stuff with their friends or family members you know you you go shopping and then you have dinner and then you go you know watch a movie and you eat popcorn I guess I, I think that does happen to people it's not just me I'm not the only person that people want to just sit around and eat with but um, I had friends like that and I realized I had to kind of distance myself from them because I knew that if I did anything outside of the norm or even a little bit less, they would take it as a personal thing where it was like, but I wanted to eat this stuff and you're now you're making me feel bad about wanting to eat it because you're not eating it too. So I hope you understand where I'm going with that. And it was so hard because I never ever wanted to make people feel bad about themselves. I even have friendships where people feel bad about being around me because I like to put makeup on. And I think they think that I judge them for not wearing makeup. Not at all. I don't think anything of it at all. In fact, I envy the fact that some people don't care to or don't want to. For me, it's it's just something I enjoy. It's It's like, I don't know, it's a comforting thing for me. And it's just something that I like. So I would kind of have to let people feed me for the longest time. And I'm still dealing with that a little bit. I've got, you know, friends or family members that know very much that I'm on this journey to lose weight. Sometimes I wish I could just like lift my shirt up and be like, this is why, okay? This is why I don't want to eat those things right now. This is why I don't want to make that bad choice today. Some days I want to. Some days it's like a relief that somebody else wants to eat badly because it's like now I have an excuse because they want to get pizza so I can eat pizza. It's always pizza. It always comes on with pizza. Oh my gosh. But you know what I'm saying. With anything. It's like if somebody says, oh, I'm really, I am really craving chips. I want some chips. Um, some days it's like my heart drops because it's like, oh no, I'm really trying to not do that. But other days it's like, finally, someone to eat chips with. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I realize that's a mixed message. Um, I totally get it. I guess the problem is, is there are times when I, it takes everything in me. It takes a lot of courage for me to say, I would really prefer to not do that. Or I, if we, if you want to order from there, that's fine, but I want to get a salad. And I just feel so steamrolled by other people sometimes where they, they hear me, they don't like what I said, and they just ignore my answer and keep going. And unfortunately, the people who do that the worst sometimes are people I can't really eliminate from my life or I don't want to not spend time with because they are family. And it's like, well, is it more about the experience of spending the time with my family? Yes, unless it happens regularly enough that it is preventing me actively from making good choices. Because say, one day a week, I always have plans with the same person, and that person always kind of coerces me into things that I'm not comfortable with, even if I only have a very small, small portion and try to hide the fact that I'm barely eating anything. Then the next day, it's harder for me to make good choices, and then sometimes I'm like, well, I just ate that yesterday, so if I want something, because that's the other thing. It's almost never anything I actually want. It's like, it's what that person wanted, and if I were going to have a cheat meal, if I were gonna call it that, it wouldn't even be this thing. So it's not even that satisfying to me. So then in my mind, I feel like, well, I cheated and I didn't even get what I wanted, so I need a do-over. That's stupid, but that happens. Or sometimes it's like, I guess it's like my brain saying, well, you should just have what you wanted then because you had to put up with that and it's like a consolation prize. I don't know, I can't explain it, but that's a thing. 
On top of that, there's the fact that I have this new, very, very important role um, as a mom and as as an, a, a, a housewife. I was gonna say as an unemployed housewife, but it's the first time I've been unemployed um, actively and by choice and I feel like I'm really not very good at it, this whole housewife thing, because I put my job as a mom before being a housewife, which they come hand in hand, because providing a good home to your child is being a good mom. So I need to, I need to, I need to start thinking that way. But anyway, um, I have a lot of guilt behind the time that I do and don't spend doing certain things. It's like I need to enrich her life. I need to teach her how to, I need to teach her how to speak and to think and to, well not teach her to think, but you know what I'm saying. I need to encourage her to blossom and grow. But I also need to do the dishes and do the laundry and somewhere in there find time to be a person, be my own person. So what that does is that makes me a bad friend. Um, and it makes me a bad friend to my family. I'm not even just talking about friends. I'm talking about everybody. Um, and the like friend portion of my life is hurting right now because I realized a few years ago that basically all of my friends were very toxic. And I don't know if I attract those kind of people. I don't know if I made monsters of them and I had something to do with that. But I slowly, and in some cases not so slowly, gave myself the gift of eliminating that toxicity out of my life. And now I'm left with, um, with you guys, with online friends, basically. And I think that happens to a lot of people. I know there are women who move around a lot and so they, you know, they can't make in-person friends very easily because say their husband's job or um, it's usually their husband's job in most cases or, you know, military wives and such. I know that there are a lot of people who have trouble making friends because they know they're not probably gonna be there very long so it's hard to even force themselves to guster up the courage. Guster up the courage? But I know there are people who are shy or there are people who are insecure and there are all sorts of reasons and you see tons of articles online about how hard it is to be a mom friend and then you find somebody you like and then you find out they have horrifying political views or horrifying vaccination views or horrifying parenting philosophies that you know, on paper, if you were to take a resume of a person and say, you know, would I be friends with them? You probably wouldn't. But otherwise, you just, you, the conversation flows well and you enjoy being around them. That's hard. Or I find myself in a position where it's like, well, I want to have friends, but I also really like being home and really like being alone. And I don't want people to take it personally if I don't want to see them four times a week or even four times a month necessarily. Like maybe this can be super casual. Maybe not, is that not how that works? So it's difficult because I've always had problems with this. Um, this dates back to middle school. I had a friend that she basically told me she was done because she always called me and I never called her. I wish I could call her today and say, bitch, I don't call anybody. I'm married to somebody that I exclusively text. If I call him, Something's probably really wrong. <laughs> so people take that personally. I also don't initiate texts. I'm not an initiator. So that's, you know, people think that I'm never thinking of them or that I don't care. Um, I just have a weird fear of rejection. I don't want to be annoying. I don't want to, um, I don't know. It, there's something in me that's just very independent. And it's always been that way. And I think there are people who aren't like that and they um, don't understand. So it's hard to be like, it's not that I don't like you. I'm just never gonna make it seem like I do somehow. But I'm so thoughtful and I'm so, um, and I care so much. But how will they know that? Uh, it's difficult. You know, I try and find ways to, to be a friend and not have it and not compromise who I am and who I feel like I need to be. You know, when I was going through 
our fertility struggles, there were some friendships that were really hard for me. Um, people who were currently pregnant and, you know, I never wanted to speak about any of that stuff. If I, I didn't even want to watch movies where people got pregnant, but I tried to be a really good friend to and family member to people who were in those positions because I knew it was an exciting time in their lives. Every now and then did I feel like saying, oh my gosh, can we talk about anything else? Anything else, please, five minutes. Can we just set a timer and for five minutes talk about puppies because I can't do this anymore. But instead, I just took it in, I just took it in, internalized it, came home, sometimes I'd have a good cry, sometimes I would eat my feelings, um, sometimes I would go shopping and shop my feelings away, but I would never ever let that person know, hey, you're hurting me. Because I did that once. I finally told somebody once, listen, I can't go to your barbecue because I know you and all of the other women there are either currently pregnant or have a very young baby or child. And I know that that's what you'll want to be discussing naturally. That's what your lives are. But I'm in a really tough place and I just, I'm trying to not be around that anymore. And I've never heard from her again. So, you know, it doesn't matter how delic delicately you say things or how careful you are about how, how your feelings are and how difficult it is for you to be honest people will just take things how they take things. But I'm gonna stop here and now, I pledge to you. At least I'm gonna try. I'm gonna stop beating myself up for not being a perfect friend, for not having a whole bunch of best friends, for not calling those girls that I knew through middle school or high school that were so bad for me um, just because I was invested in that for as long as I was. Because obviously, in order to maintain those friendships, I had to ignore things that were hard for me, um, or painful for me, or uncomfortable, or just undesirable, in order to have a friend that I didn't truly want just to say I could have the friend. So I think in this day and age, we have a beautiful thing that we couldn't have taken advantage of ever in the history of time before the internet, really. I mean, there were like, what, pen pails? But this is a time where you can very specifically carve out space for people that you know have like-minded interests and like-minded needs and like-minded feelings. Um, you're never going to find somebody who's exactly you, but you can find people that you feel a genuine respect and love for that you know can return it to you because you can lay it all out there. Um, do sometimes I worry that if I hadn't met my husband before the internet, you know, and we both had dating profiles, would I have picked him? Maybe not. So it's not foolproof, but... I'm going to stop feeling like I have to hold on to things and let myself absorb bad feelings just for the sake of saying that I have friends that aren't true friends because they don't understand me or they don't care about my needs or my feelings ultimately because they just want me to fill the space and be the person I've always been and any growth or change is threatening to them. Um, I also don't have time for, I guess, I don't know, I, I don't have time, I don't want to make time, is what I should say. I don't want to make time for people that take away time from what matters most to me right now, and that's this family that I worked so hard to have. If I can enjoy their company with my family, that's fine. But if it's something where it's time that I could be spending with my mother or, you know, with my husband who I don't see as much as I'd like to because he works so hard um, or because we're so tired that we go to bed the second Vera goes to sleep, you know, if it's time that I could be spending in a better way, I'm going to do it right now. I've got time when she's a teenager and doesn't want to hang out with her mom anymore and wants to spend time with her friends. That's, that's... I'll, I'll figure it out, you know? 
that's time that I'll have to fill. But right now I don't have to fill it. I have to carve it out and I don't want to. And I shouldn't feel bad about that. I want to be a friend. I want to have friends. I have a very small number of people that right now are filling up my heart and my space really nicely. And then there are some of you that, you know, we don't talk all the time. We just message each other here and there like every few weeks, but it doesn't, I don't know. I, I really appreciate having friends like that, that don't think like, oh, well, I never hear from Carissa unless I send her a meme or something and she responds. I'm sorry. That's basically what our friendship is right now. And if you're not okay with that, then you can send it to somebody else. You know, I guess, I don't know. I, I'm probably not articulating this as well as I like to be because I just kind of come here and just, bleh. it feels so good to get it out. And it feels so good for some of you to tell me that you hear me and that it helps you in some way. I've gotten some messages about videos I made years ago that I cringe at the thought of them being out there and I won't dare go back and watch them ever again. But the, the things that I said because I felt them and validated their feelings helped. So I just want you to know that it's okay to be a bad friend and it's okay to do it by choice. I'm not trying to, I'm really, I'm not trying to neglect people. I'm not trying to not answer messages within five seconds. But, you know, if, if Vera's not asleep or if I'm not sitting in bed at the end of the day and going through stuff, then that's when I'm not, you know, that's when I'm going to see that stuff. I'm trying to actively live my life and not have my face on my phone all the time. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I turn my ringer off. I put my phone in the other room, which I don't like to do because I like having a camera right there for anything cute that could happen that I want to remember. Because I want to take 100 pictures a day, a day and 100 videos a day so that in a year, two years, 10 years, I can look at it on time hop and get really upset and really sad <laughs> and miss my baby. Um, but no, I really appreciate having all these little memories of her because I for you forget. You just, you do. No matter how precious you think you know, these, these images in your head and your mind are, you forget these little delicate, intricate things about, about your baby and about, you know, the way things looked, the room that you were sitting in, you know, the place where you were. I have a lot of emotional attachment to that. So to me, I love having my phone on me all the time so I can take lots of pictures. But then I have a really hard time not opening all of my messages, opening Instagram, and I'm a to-do list here. I like to be like, done, 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 done. Answer that message, answer that message, read that email. But you know what? It never ends. It doesn't ever end. So I can't think of it that way. I have to think, not now. It's for another time. And Vera did something recently that broke my heart. And I think, I feel like I'm good about it. I feel like I'm better than I used to be and then maybe most people are. No, I mean, not to, not to sound like that. I'm saying I make a real conscious effort and it, I have to kind of fight it almost like it's an addiction to not be looking at my phone all the time. So even for someone like me who really tries really hard not to do that, and like even when it's on the table, I have it face down. I've always done that. It's a habit for years. I've always had it face down. All my notifications are turned off. I don't know I have a message unless I open the app. Do you know what I mean? But I had my phone out and I was just scrolling through some stuff one day and Vera took her hand and pushed my phone away like this. That made me so sad. So, I'm working on that. I put it, I put the phone in the other room. Sometimes I even tell myself like, okay, it's three o'clock right now. It's actually not, it's 9.30 in the morning. But for example, it's three o'clock right now. I'm not gonna look at my phone until five o'clock. And that's hard, but that's what I try. I try really hard to just to make the priorities that are the priorities real 
and stick with it and be present. I'm not trying to be a helicopter parent. Um, I'm not trying to be in her face all the time. I'm just trying to be there. So every time I start to feel bad about other aspects of my life and the things that I'm choosing to let go, I think about how it's for her and I hope that she appreciates it someday. And that this is a relatively new issue in the world of parenting. Um, she doesn't play with my phone. I know that that day will come, but I don't hand her my phone. I don't hand her her iPad. Um, she doesn't know if the iPad is any different from the TV in the living room. It just sits in the car when we go places. Um, and we have an, a really old one upstairs that we play just kind of like for background noise or music upstairs when we're putting laundry away or something. And I want to keep it that way for as long as I can. Um, I'm not saying I'm better than people who give their children the technology. I just want to lead by example and I want to to make this time with her count until she's old enough to request these things and, you know, and be more of a person and want to make choices for how she spends her day and her time. Um, that'll make it a lot more difficult and then things will have to change and will adapt and, you know, in the process. But I see all these, you know, great Instagrammers and like keto Instagrammers that really inspire me or helping me on my journey. And they put a lot of content out there that helps me a lot and I want to give back, but I know I'll never be able to do it at the capacity that they do, at least not for a few years. Um, I'll never be able to have a friend that I just text with back and forth all day long because then I'll have been just looking at my phone all day long. Um, I want to start putting my foot down and doing what I need to do for me, for my family, and learning how to deal with the consequences of people who are not willing to be there for me in that, because I would be there for them. So that is my thought of the day, and I'm gonna go finish putting my makeup on because I knew I wouldn't finish it while I was talking to you. Um, thank you for sitting here and listening to this I'm sorry it's so long. I'm sorry my videos are so long and that I'm so long-winded and that I save so much of what I need to say for these big, long, um, kind of whiny videos, but it's very healing for me and that's my hope is that it was healing for at least one of you. So thank you and thank you guys for being my friends. I'll talk to you soon.